This is Mrs. Wainwright's math class, chapter 9, lesson 1, line plots. The learning target for today, by the end of the day, you should confidently be able to say, I can use a line plot to help find an average with data given in fractions. This is example number 1. Students have measured different amounts of water into beakers for an experiment. The amount of water in each beaker is listed below. And here I see various different measurements listed, all in the unit of cups. If the total amount of water stayed the same, what would the average amount of water be? I need to find the average amount of water. I have lots of cups here, and the amounts are all over the place. So I'm going to make myself a line plot, which will help me see what's what, and it will help me to find the average amount of water in each beaker. First thing I need to do when I'm making a line plot is see what data I have. So my first data that I find is 1 fourth cup. I want to find how many other 1 fourth cups I have, so how many 1 fourth cups we have all together. So I'm going to write 1 fourth, and I'm going to count how many 1 fourths I have. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I have 7 1 fourth cups, so I'll put a 7 next to my 1 fourth. Now I want to find the next bit of data I have. So I'm going to find the first number that is not yet crossed out. And I see that I have one half. So let's count how many one halves I have. First I'll write down my one half and we'll count how many. Cross them out as you go. One, two, and that's it. So I have two one half cups. I'll write that down next to my one half. Move to my next number that's not crossed out and I see that it is three fourths cup. So let's write that down, 3 fourths, and let's cross out all of the 3 fourths and count as we go. 1, 2, 3. There are 3 3 fourths cups, so I will write that down. I notice that I've crossed all of my data out, so I now have all of my data written down with a number next to each fraction. When I'm making a line plot, it's important to put my data in order from smallest to largest. So I'm going to take a look at my fractions. I have one fourth, one half, three fourths. And if I look at the fractions and I'm not sure if they're in order from least to greatest, I can compare as I learned in chapters six, seven, and eight, packet F. So I'll compare the first two fractions. One fourth compares to one half. Remember we do the diagonal multiplication. So I'm gonna say two times one equals two. Write it down and circle it. Four times one equals four write it down and circle it, and I compare the circled numbers. 2 is less than 4, so I'll put a less than sign right there. Therefore, 1 fourth is less than 1 half. I'll move the less than sign up top. Now I'll compare the next two fractions, 1 half and 3 fourths, and see if I can figure it out. So write down 1 half with a comparison circle, 3 fourths. Remember diagonal multiplication to compare, so 4 times 1 equals 4, circle it. 2 times 3 equals 6, circle it, 4 is less than 6, therefore 1 half is less than 3 fourths. So I see that 1 fourth is less than 1 half, which is less than 3 fourths. Therefore these numbers are already in order from least to greatest, and that's what I need for my line plot, so I'm ready to go. And that is in order from smallest to largest, small, large. Perfect, so I'm ready to make my line plot. First step in making a line plot is, goes along with the name, is to draw the line for the line plot. I use a ruler to draw a nice straight line, very important. Next step for the line plot, I'm going to draw little vertical tick marks or little vertical marks to um, stand for each of the different types of data. I know that I have three different types of data. I have one fourth cup, one half cup, and three fourths cup, so I'll need three little vertical lines. And there are my three vertical lines. Now I will label each line with my data in order from smallest to largest. So we said one fourth is the smallest amount, one half is the next smallest amount, and three fourths is the largest of the amounts that I was given. Now one thing that students very often forget in a line plot, and hopefully we're going to learn from the mistakes of others, the things that the line plot must have. So I'm going to write it in red so that we don't forget. Line plots must have two lines under the must because that's how important it is. They must have a title. This title would be 
water used because that's what this is about water used and it must have the unit this is this amount of water used is in cups as we see by each of our units that were written in our original problem so again it must have a title with the units very important now in a line plot above the line we use X's to show our data so I know that I have seven one-fourth cups in my data so I'll put seven X's evenly spaced above my one-fourth cup to show each one-fourth cup that was used. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So each X stands for my seven one-fourth cups. I'm done with my one-fourth cups. I will now move on to my one-half cups. I have two of them, so I will need two X's. Very important when drawing the X's to make them even with other X's that you've already drawn. So my first X over my one-half, nice and even with the first X over my one-fourth. That's one, two, since I had two one-half cups. Now I move on to my three-fourths cups, and there were three of them, so I will need three X's, again, nice and lined up, evenly spaced. One, two, three. Again, note that spacing. In a minute, I'm going to use some red arrows to show you what I mean by even spacing. I do want you to know that I'm only using the arrows to show you how you're going to, with your eye or with your finger, space the X's evenly. Those red arrows and those lines that I'm going to be putting in in red should not be in your line plot. Even, 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 even. And the last one for the three-fourths, I don't have one, an X in the one-half, but I do have it in the one-fourth, and notice how that's even. Very important to have them evenly spaced. So now that my line plot is done, let's go back and look at my actual question, what they're asking me for, and it says, what would be the average amount of water in a beaker? I need to find the average. So let's go to the next page and find that average. Let's stop for a minute and go back to review what we learned in both third and fourth grades. We're going to use simpler numbers just to remember as a refresher, then we'll get back to problem number one. So as a review, to find an average, you add all of the numbers together to find the sum of all of the numbers. Then you divide that sum by the number of numbers you added. So let's take a look at a simple example. The example says find the average of 7, 8, and 12. So I first need to add all of the numbers. So I'll say 7 plus 8 plus 12. I add that together and I get 27. So the sum is 27. Next I divide that sum by the number of numbers I added. I know my sum was 27 and I added a 7 an 8 and a 12, so I added three numbers. Therefore, I'm going to divide my sum of 27 by the three numbers that I added. And 27 divided by 3 equals 9. Therefore, the average of 7, 8, and 12 is 9. So that's how I find a, an average. I add all of the numbers and divide that sum by the number of numbers I added. Okay, let's get back to our original problem. And focus in on my original problem again, which was the students with the water that they used in the beaker. The question was, what would be the average amount of water in the beaker? So now I'm going to go ahead, that I, since I remember how to find an average, and I'm going to solve that problem. I need to add all of my numbers together and divide by the number of numbers I added. So here's my line plot, and let's see what I have. For the one-fourth cup, I have seven times one-fourth, put that in parentheses, plus for the one-half cup, I have two, so I'll say two times one-half, plus for the three-fourths cups, I have three, so I'll say three times three-fourths, and I'll put the entire thing in brackets. And the answer to that will be the sum, because it will be all of the numbers that I've added together. So the answer to this will equal the sum.
So again, to find the average, you add all the numbers to find the sum, and then you have to divide by the number of numbers I added. Let's see how many numbers I will have added. I count my x's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So once I get the sum, I will divide that by 12, and that will give me my average. Okay, let's move to the next page to find that sum. So I'm going to solve my first parentheses, which is 7 times 1 fourth. I'll rewrite it, and I'll make it 7 over 1 times 1 fourth, because you know when I multiply or divide fractions, it has to be full fraction by full fraction. I do x11, 7 and 4 I cannot reduce, 7 over 1, there's a 1, 1 over 4, there's a 1, so that I cannot reduce, I'm simply going to multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So 7 times 1 equals 7, 1 times 4 equals 4. That is not a proper fraction, it will not work in a chicken fight, so of course I have to drop it down into the division box. 4 goes into 7 one time with a remainder of 3. So I'm going to make it 1 and 3 fourths. So that's the total for my 1 fourth cups. Now let's take a look at my next parentheses. 2 times 1 and a half. So I'll write 2 over 1 to make it a fraction times 1 half. I see that I can divide both of my 2's by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So my new problem is 1 over 1 times 1 over 1, which will equal 1 over 1, which equals 1. Take a look at my next parentheses, which is 3 times 3 fourths. So again, I'm going to say 3 over 1 to turn it into a fraction times 3 fourths. I cannot simplify here, so I'm going to multiply. 3 times 3 equals 9. 1 times 4 equals 4. I have 9 fourths. That is not a proper fraction. It will not work in a chicken fight. So I'm going to drop it down into the division box. And I have 9 divided by 4. 4 goes into 9 two times with a remainder of 1. So I'll turn that into a fraction to make the answer of 2 and 1 fourth. So now I've solved everything in the parentheses, which is my first part, part A. Now for part B, I am going to need to add them all together. So I have my 1 and 3 fourths, which I did in orange, plus my 1, which I did in blue. Remember, whole numbers get lined up in their own column, fractions get lined up in their own column, plus my 2 and 1 fourths that I did in green. I add them all together. Remember, when I add fractions or subtract fractions, the denominators need to be the same. They need to be common, and they are. They're both 4, so I'm good. So 3 fourths plus 1 fourth equals 4 fourths. 1 plus 1 plus 2, well, 1 plus 1 is 2 plus 2 gives me 4. So I have 4 and 4 fourths. I know that any number over itself is a whole, therefore 4 and 4 fourths is the same thing as 5. So there's a total of 5 cups of water, and 5 is my sum. And if I go back to this previous page, I remember that I said after I get the sum, I have to divide it by 12, since there were 12 x's all together. So my sum was 5 divided by the 12. 12 goes into 5, 12 too high, put my finger down 0 times. 0 times 12 is 0. 5 take away 0 is 5. Since I was working with fractions, I'll put my remainder as a fraction. So my remainder 5 becomes my numerator, my divisor 12 becomes my denominator. I have 0 and 5 twelfths, or simply 5 twelfths. I do need to make sure my final answer is fully simplified, so I'll find the greatest common factors of both 5 and 12 to simplify. Factors of 5 are 1 and 5. 2 doesn't work, 3 doesn't work, 4 doesn't work, so I'm done. When I go through my 5s, do I say 12? 5, 10, 15, nope. Therefore, my GCF is 1. We know if my GCF is 1, my fraction is done. This was a word problem, so let's go back and put 5 twelfths into my final word problem answer. Go back to my original problem. The question says, what would be the average amount of water in a beaker? So the average amount of water in a beaker is 5 twelfths cup. Notice that 
It's not cups, plural. It's cup, singular, because there are no whole cups in there. There's no whole number. It's not a mixed number. It's not a whole number. It's simply a fraction. Five twelfths is less than one, so your unit should, should be singular. The average amount of water in a beaker is five twelfths cup, and that's the final answer. Also, I want to point out, notice in this line plot, there are no arrows connecting the X's. I only did that originally in the problem to show you how to line up the X's. But a final line plot should simply look like this, what you see here in black. It's the line with a tick mark for each unit. The numbers that you label the tick mark with are in order from least to greatest. You have a title on the bottom with the unit in parentheses and you have an X straight as possible, straight up over each amount. Your X's are lined up from left to right so that you can look at the line plot and quickly and easily see the differences between each amount. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number one right now. Let's take a look at example number two. Rain divides three two-ounce bags of rice into smaller bags. The first bag is divided into bags weighing one-sixth ounce each. The second bag is divided into bags weighing one-third ounce each. And the third bag is divided into bags weighing one-half ounce each. Find the number of one-sixth, one-third, and one-half ounce rice bags. That's the first thing I need to do. Then graph the results on the line plot. then graph the results on the line plot. Let's go back to the question and see what I know. I know that Rain will divide three two-ounce bags of rice into smaller bags. So she's got three bags, they each weigh two ounces, and we're making them into smaller bags. Okay, I know that the first bag is going to be divided into bags that weigh one-sixth of an ounce each. The second bag of rice is going to be divided into smaller bags weighing one-third of an ounce each. And the third bag of rice is going to be divided into bags weighing one-half ounce each. So let's draw a picture because I think that will make it a little bit easier to understand. So here's my first bag, same color that maroon. I underlined it in the pro my problem first bag. I know that she had three bags each weighing two ounces, so this first bag started off weighing two ounces. I know that she's going to divide it into smaller bags, so I'll put an arrow here, and I'll draw a smaller bag, and each of those smaller bags is going to weigh one-sixth of an ounce, as I circled in maroon. So one-sixth of an ounce. She'll make another smaller bag that's one-sixth of an ounce, because each one is one-sixth of an ounce. I don't know how many smaller bags she'll make, so I'm going to put a dot, 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 like a keep going, until I use up all two ounces of that rice. Okay? I know that the second bag of rice, which I under, underlined in green, so I'll draw it in green. Again, each bag started out as two ounces. I'm going to divide that up into smaller bags, and each bag is going to weigh one-third of an ounce. So here's a smaller bag that's one-third of an ounce. It will break into another smaller bag that's also one-third of an ounce. How many smaller bags will it break into? I don't know. So I'm going to put dot, dot, dot to say I have to keep going and find out how many one-third ounce bags I can make from the original two ounce bag. Okay, let's look at a purple. Our third bag, so I'll draw that in purple. Again, each of them started out as two ounces. I'm gonna break that into smaller bags and each of these ones will break into smaller bags that are one half an ounce. So I'll draw a smaller bag that's one half ounce. It'll break yet another smaller bag that's also one half ounce. They're all gonna be one half ounces for this one. I don't know how many little bags I'll need, so I'll put dot, dot, dot to tell me I have to keep going and figure that out. Well, how can I figure out how much each bag can break into? Well, look at the picture. If I go back to maroon, I have a big bag, a total of two ounces. I'm going to break it into smaller equal groups, one-sixth of an ounce each. When I have a total and I'm breaking it into smaller equal groups, what type of math is that? That's right. That's division. So I'll say my total of two divided by smaller groups of one-sixth ounce each, two divided by one-sixth. Okay, let's rewrite this. We're going to do keep, change, flip. So keep two, I know we need to turn that into a fraction, so I'll make it two over one. 
2 over 1, change division to multiplication, and flip 1 6 to 6 over 1. I'm going to do my x11, but 2 and 1 is a 1, 1 and 6 is a 1, 2 and 1 is a 1, 6 and 1 is a 1. There's no x11 that I can do, so I'm simply going to multiply numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. 2 times 6 equals 12, 1 times 1 equals 1. I have 12 over 1, which I know is the same thing as 12. So I have 12 1 6 ounce bags for the first bag. That first bag separates into 12 1 6 ounce little bags. Okay, let's take a look at my green for my second bag. Again, I started with 2 ounces, and I'm going to divide them into equal groups of 1 third ounce each. Start with the total. Dividing it into smaller equal groups is a division problem. So for my second bag, again, I started with 2 ounces in the big bag. I divided it into smaller bags with 1 third of an ounce into each bag. Multiply and divide fractions. I need fractions only, so I'll put 2 over 1. Now I have fractions. When I divide, it's keep, change, flip. 2 over 1 is what I'll keep. I'll change my division to multiplication, and I'll flip 1 over 3 to 3 over 1. x11, I check it out, and there's all 1, so I cannot simplify. So I'll do numerator times numerator, 3 times 2 equals 6, denominator times denominator, 1 times 1 equals 1. And I know that 6 over 1 equals 6. So I have 6 one third ounce bags from that second bag of rice. Let's move on to my third bag, which was the purple. For the purple, again, I started with a two ounce large bag of rice, and I'm going to separate it into smaller bags. For my third bag, I know that I started with a large bag of two ounces. I'm going to separate it into smaller bags of one half ounce each. So my total is two. I'm breaking it into smaller equal groups. We know that means division. So I'll say 2 divided by my equal groups, which is half an ounce each. Multiply, divide, fractions. I have to have fractions only, so I'll put the 2 over 1. Now I have fraction divided by fraction. When I divide, it's keep, change, flip. So 2 over 1 is what I keep. Change division to multiplication and flip 1 over 2 to 2 over 1. I do x11. And I see that it's all 1, so I cannot simplify. So I will simply multiply numerator times numerator. 2 times 2 equals 4. Denominator times denominator. 1 times 1 equals 1. I know that's the same thing as 4. So I have 4 bags that are 1 half ounce each. That first part of my question told me to find the number of 1 sixth, 1 third, and 1 half ounce rice bags. And I did. There are 12 1 6 ounce rice bags, 6 1 3rd ounce rice bags, and 4 1 half ounce rice bags. The next directions tell me then graph the results on a line plot, so that's what I need to do next. I need to graph this. So the next part of the question says then graph the results on a line plot. What results am I going to graph? I'm going to graph the number of 1 6 ounce bags, one third ounce bags, and one half ounce bags. So I'll move to the next page to have plenty of room, and when I make a line plot, the first thing I need is my line. Remember, it needs to be a horizontal, perfectly straight, ruler-made line. Then I need vertical tick marks for each thing that I'll be plotting on the line plot. Remember I said I had three fractions, so I'm going to put my three vertical tick marks evenly spaced. But remember, for a line plot, I must put my numbers in order from least to greatest. So let's go to the next page, and let's do our comparing fractions to put our fractions in order from least to greatest. And once again, my fractions are 1 sixth, 1 third, and 1 half. So I have 1 sixth, 1 third, and 1 half. Let's compare the first two. 1 sixth compares to 1 third. Remember, diagonal multiplication. So 3 times 1 equals 3, circle it. 6 times 1 equals 6, circle it. And 3 is less than 6, therefore 1 sixth is less than 1 third. Let's take my next two fractions to compare. 1 third compares to 1 half. Cross multiplication. 2 times 1 is 2, circle it. 3 times 1 is 3, circle it. 
2 is less than 3, therefore 1 third is less than 1 half. So luckily again, these numbers are already in order from least to greatest. It's going to go 1 sixth, 1 third, 1 half. So first tick mark is my least, 1 sixth, then 1 third, up to my greatest, 1 half. Remember, every time you have a line plot, you need to label the line plot. Give it a title. And in our problem, we're talking about bags of rice, weights of bags of rice, and our unit, as we see, is ounces. So we have bags of rice in ounces. So I'll write the title, which goes under the line plot, weight of rice, and then my unit goes in parentheses, in ounces. And now I'm ready to go ahead and graph that information. So there are 12 1 6 ounce bags, therefore I need to make 12 evenly spaced X's over the 1 6 ounce, as straight as possible. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. How many 1 3rd ounce bags were there? There were 6 1 3rd ounce bags. So I'll make six X's over the one-third, doing them nice and straight and lining them up evenly with the X's on the left side. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six one-third ounce bags. And finally, we had four one-half ounce bags. So we'll put four X's above the one-half. Again, making them as straight as possible and making them even with the X's to the left of them. So that's one, two, three, four. So I have now graphed my results on a line plot. Remember, I have a nice horizontal straight ruler line. I have a tick mark for each amount, which is a one-sixth bag, a one-third bag, a one-half bag. I have a title that says weight of rice with a unit in ounces, and I have the correct number of X's for each amount of bags. 12 X's for 1 6 ounce, 6 X's for 1 3rd ounce, and 4 X's for 1 half ounce. I have completed my line plot. So the question told me to find the number of 1 6, 1 3rd, and 1 half ounce rice bags, and I did right here, here, and here. And the question also told me to graph the results on a line plot, which I did right here. I have fully answered all parts of this question. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number two right now. Let's review. When making a line plot, we need to make a horizontal straight ruler line. We need to make a tick mark for each amount of data that we're going to plot on this line plot. We need to label each tick mark with the number that it represents. Those numbers must be put in order from least to greatest on the line plot. So do a comparison ahead of time if you need to, to make sure you're numbering them in order from least to greatest. You need to have a title at the bottom of the line plot, as we see here in black, what are used. And then the unit needs to be in parentheses, so in cups, or if it was ounces, in ounces, or whatever it was, put it in parentheses. You have an X above the tick mark and a nice straight line for each unit that you have. So for each one-fourth cup, there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. So you have seven X's because there were seven one-fourth cups. There were two one-half cups, so you have two X's. There were three three-fourth cups, so you have three X's. Notice that the X's are nice and straight, and they're also lined up from left to right. Sometimes when working with line plots, they'll ask you to find an average. And remember, to find an average, you add all of the numbers to get the sum, and you take that sum and divide it by the number of numbers you added. So in this example of whole numbers, we had the average of 7, 8, and 12. We added 7, 8, and 12, got the, got the sum of 27. There were three numbers, 7 was the first, 8 was the second, 12 was the third. So we divided that 27 by the three numbers we added, giving us 9, so the average was 9. And something else to notice, a good thing about a line plot is that you can look at the line plot and you can see right away which amount has the most and which amount has the least. When I look at this line plot, which has the most, 1 fourth, 1 half, or 3 fourths? 
That's right, it's one-fourth, which has the least. That's right, it's one-half. But if you look at the data like we saw originally given to us, that makes it very difficult to see which one has the most and the least. So the line plot is useful as a quick glance to know which one has the most and which one has the least. Hopefully by now you can confidently say, I can use a line plot to help find an average with data given in fractions. As always, we will be practicing this more in class. If you have any questions or concerns, please see a teacher. We will work with you and help you to understand it. Good luck with the lesson.